So welcome to Whippoorwill Holler. I'm Miss Lori, and this is Mr. Brown. We live in the hills of Arkansas. We love the Lord. Keepers of the old way, but accept some of the new. We love to cook, and we love to eat. We love to garden. It's in our blood. It's how we stay sustainable and fill our pantry. We do a lot of canning and preserving. We live a sustainable life. We love our family. We work hard. And every once in a while, we like to dance. So y'all join us. Well, we're running away from home, everybody. Running away. We, we got so much to do, we're running off. <laughs> we got up and just decided, heck with it all. We're just leaving town. So we're just going to take y'all with us. I wonder how cold it got last night. We were supposed to get a freeze, wasn't we? Yeah, below freezing. Below freezing. Yes, I don't know quite cold it was, but it's cold. April the 8th. Was yesterday the 8th? This morning is the 9th. Okay, that makes yesterday the 8th then. So, we're just coming into Hardy. We're going down here to Corner Booth Cafe, Hardy, Arkansas. This is where I do a lot of my flea marketing. And there's several y'all that have been here and come here or even through here quite a bit. So y'all recognize all this. You gotta go on to Miss Moss's antiques. Oh yeah, right she, there. She was a school teacher for our kids at one time. And right down through here are some of our favorite memory lane I find quite a bit in there I like going into Miller's and there's shop. a leather shop right there and right here's the corner booth they've Restaurant. done they've done some, uh, they built on a little bit here the this year but this restaurant's been here oh oh we're going past it we're going past it it's too rough turn in right okay now. people walking we're going to go around to the back of the restaurant because that's where the best parking is but most of these houses up here in uh, this area this area of hardy are old oh. old houses been here for many years and this little corner booth restaurant i want you to look how many people's in this parking lot stays so busy they serve breakfast till two o'clock and they shut down at two o'clock but they also have uh two main dishes they serve every day look at that old house right there two main dishes they serve every day and then they have hamburgers and stuff but they do close it too but we like to come here and eat breakfast so we're at the corner booth today it's a beautiful day and we're talking to the owner's granddaughter is that correct yes. and your name is Reagan Booth and she has been here since you were the little girl basically. yes pretty much <laughs> so 
They've added on to the place. It's really nice. We've been coming up here for several years off and on. And we get a chance, we come up. And so how long has this corner booth been here that you know of? Um, around 40 years, I want to say. Around 40 years. Yes. It's been a long time. We've never been here a long time. So it's always been a, a restaurant. Well, before it was a restaurant, it was like a train station, gas station. Okay. And then she just built onto it and made it to a restaurant. Okay. And what they've had on it really, it doubled the size. Of yeah, it. it's nice. It's bigger in here than it is. We, in yeah, we always over. usually just sit over there, but. Yeah. So, I think maybe you're doing some schooling, maybe I've heard. Off um, <laughs> yeah, I'm doing college uh, at Ozarka online. I wanted to take over the place, but then I worked here three months straight and I'm like, I don't, really want, I don't want to deal with it. Restaurant business is very, very hard work. Because my grandma, she stresses out every single day because of the pot from affording it and then people and, you know. Well, prices are going up everywhere, so that's just, when groceries go up, everything else goes up. We appreciate it. We appreciate it. We really, the French toast was great. It was great. It was so good, yeah. And, of course, he always gets the chicken fried steak and eggs, but thank you for doing this interview because we do love this place, and we hope it's here for 40 more years. So thank you. Thank you. Okay, we just left the corner booth and we are full as ticks. Now we're going to walk down here, walk to the main street where all the shops are. And here we are, we are in Ozark Craft Mall. And these dogs have been in this store forever. Here's some handmade wooden wind chimes. They sound so pretty. We've got some handmade walking sticks and these down here are so funny because they're they're canes like a walking cane looking like a handsaw and here we've got some handmade wooden toys just like they used to make Tr old trucks and trains and tractors And, of course, airplanes. And this right here is really, really neat thing here. These are personalized little bats, like souvenirs. And they put your favorite ball team, the name, and even your favorite ball player. They put this on these bats. And it is the neatest thing. I'm telling you. i never seen nothing like it. And up here they've got plaques of the the ballparks where each team plays at their own um, hometown. I mean, the detail. And, of course, it is officially licensed, so it's all up and up. But it is just one of the neatest things I think I've ever seen. And I will try to put... A phone number or a link below to this place if y'all might be interested. I don't know if they sell online or you can only buy in the store, but I will check it out, I promise. I mean, look at the detail on that. And, of course, this is my favorite little booth. All the Rada knives, which is my favorite. These are the best knives in the world to me. Um, they just last forever. They are some heavy duty, sharp. They stay sharp. And they're just, they're my favorite. You can buy these online. It's rada.com. And I'll show you the one that I like the best for peeling potatoes. It's this one right here. 
This is my favorite peeling knife. The handles are wonderful. They're not going to break. Your there's a biscuit cutter. You're not your blade's not going to come out of it. It's just it's the best knife there is. And y'all have seen me use these whisks like this. And I got mine. Mine's eroded, but I got it off Amazon. And you can get a black handle or you can get the silver handle. And I love these little spatulas. And then all kinds of stuff. This is a really neat this is all rotted. little gift package there. Order these online. But you can see They're the different there. ones they've got. I just some stuff I seen. And you can't go wrong with Rada. R-A-D-A. We got some cookbooks. This is another slice of Arkansas pie. Oh, you can? Arkansas is known for their pies. That. That's for sure. And here's another one. It is Arkansas food. The A to Z. Eating in Arkansas. And I want y'all to look at this. They even personalize your your stuff. And this is a neat thing here. This is a pie pan and it's got a cover on it. And I love I love that. That's a good idea. And they'll personalize the top of that um the cover for you too. And these little characters here are so sweet. These are handmade out of forks and spoons. You ever seen such thing? I think they even use a salt or pepper shaker, but that's a cat made of forks and spoons. There's a little frog. I think that's a little dog. People are just so talented. Here's some more cookbooks. And I promise I didn't take any of them home. <laughs> I looked at a couple, but I didn't. I didn't buy any. I promise. I knew I didn't need any more cookbooks. I was tempted. And here's a bunch of jarred up goodness here. All kinds of different pickles. And jams. And relishes and chow chows. And here's some cheese boards. These are really going good right now. And these are some kind of little utensil that goes with the, the cheese board. Never seen them before. That's pretty neat. It creates something and they sell it. And the handmade furniture is just beautiful because we have some of the prettiest lumber here we got coffee tables and benches and of course you have to have the old deer horns on everything here in arkansas there's an old look at all the goodies y'all tell me in the comments if y'all see something that y'all have or your mama had or your grandma had because when i look at all this that's what it reminds me of stuff that grandma and great grandma had and it's so tempting to buy all the little whatnots and the salt and pepper shakers and the, the things that you see that remind your grandma but and sometimes I just can't help it, and I do, but only if there's a pretty good price on it. And a lot of this stuff has got a pretty good price on it. Not too bad, but I mean, you know, if it reminds you of somebody and it makes you happy, I say go for it. And you know the decor back then. It has so much character, and I love these these old pitchers, the juice pitchers, the tea pitchers, the water pitchers. And I do collect old bottles. 
whether if they're medicine bottles or anything like that. I think it's pretty neat. And Danny loves these two pictures. Now, if anybody has ever seen these or has them, let us know down in the comments. Trying to get some information on them. They want a pretty good price for them. But like I said, they're pretty old. B&S Creations in New York. They want eighty nine fifty for it. This right here is an old wooden file cabinet. You don't you don't see these very often anymore. And they just want sixty five dollars for it. And I don't think that's bad because we've really looked it over and it's in in really good condition. And the thing is really heavy. But Danny had this idea that you could put chicken wire in the bottom of each one of these drawers and you could store your onions, your potatoes, drill you a few holes in the side. I think that would work. And of course, here I am over here by the cookbooks. But I'm not buying any. But I do like to, to look at them. Louis L'Amour, all kinds of, flea markets are a really good place to get books, if you like to read. Stay away, Laura, you don't need them. You don't need them. And there's a whole stack of Tupperware down through there. Now, this is my favorite place in this store. These are restored hutches. One after another after another. And I don't know who's doing this, but they're doing such a wonderful job. They're all different colors, different sizes. And I can tell you the price on them is not that bad. Aren't they pretty? And the biscuit table, the top, they're all vintage. And I just love them. And of course, all the Pyrex dishes and mixing bowls. The different colors. Different patterns. different shapes I've got one just like that one and I've seen these dishes and I just love them the, I love the pattern and I love the color the cream and the red I really really like it The little spice containers. I remember those. Such pretty things. Now we're out here at the Memorial Garden with some of the prettiest, prettiest tulips I've ever seen. And I just wanted to share it with you. The beautiful colors, the yellows, the pinks, the reds, the purples. Such deep red colors. This is just outside on the corner of the main street. And they just do a very good job taking care of this corner. It's just beautiful. We're going into the Hardy Museum. There's the Farmer's Bank of Hardy. So... Miss Lori and I want this for our house. The only problem is it weighs about 6,000 pounds. <laughs> it's double safe. I'm talking about in its day, you wouldn't, it's double combination lock, double doors. 
he wasn't going to get in it very easy. Pretty neat. 1917. There's the farmer's bank. And this thing is really neat. I'd like to have it, but I don't guess I'll get to get it. It's made in Cincinnati, New York. Here's an old printer's press. One of the original presses in Hardy. There's a picture of me and Lori. Old map of Arkansas. You'll see here in a second. There we are, right there. There's a barber chair. Love to go to the barber. Would still love to go to the barber. There's some gangsters that were rested in Hardy that were passing through. Just some nice old pictures. There's somebody jumping off the top of Hardy Bridge. There's a picture of the old bridge. There's the old Main Street. Jackie Robinson, still in home, 1952. Okay, so we've left the flea markets at Hardy. We stopped at McDonald's and I got me a small caramel frappe. <laughs> it's so good, I love these things. And Mr. Brown's got a fudge sundae. And now we're on our way to Mammoth Springs, Arkansas. Don't eat and drive. Because <laughs> you get it in your beard. <laughs> Is it good? Pretty good. Pretty good. Well, we are back from a long day. And it's about 8 o'clock at night. And I need to get this casserole going for our lunch after church tomorrow. This is about 30 ounces of uh, hash browns. They were uh, dehydrated hash browns, and I hydrated them. It just takes some water, and uh, there's 30 ounces there. You can use frozen or whichever you have. And I've got a pound of, of ground beef that I browned up. Put salt and pepper, garlic, and onion powder. And you just need 10 ounces of cream of mushroom. Now, I dug and dug and dug, and I found this can because I am out of my homemade cream of mushroom or cream of something mixture that I make my, and this was just easier. It's late tonight, and I, I'm glad, I'm, well, tell you the truth, I'm glad I found this can of cream of mushroom soup. It just made things easier, but I need to get my cream of something mix. I need to get it another batch of it together and I need to get some mushrooms dehydrated mushrooms or freeze-dried mushrooms I'm out of mushrooms um, we had a wonderful day I need to get some things going for our lunch tomorrow for after church so I'm in here kind of late but I'll tell you what I'm gonna do I'm gonna pour a cup of milk in here I'm going to get this casserole in my bacon dish and uh, get it all together. Then I'm going to cover it up and I'm going to put it in the refrigerator. And that way tomorrow it'll be ready to stick in the oven. Because I think I'm going to roast a, a whole turkey tomorrow too. I'll put it in the oven right before I leave for church. And uh, we'll just have a pretty good lunch. Now I've got two cups of shredded cheese here. And uh, I'm going to put... About half of it in there. I'm just using whatever cheese I had in there because I need to get rid of it. And there might be a little more than two cups here. But I wanted to use all of it. And this is this recipe is kind of pretty much like the hash brown casserole. It's just using hash browns. Or not. What did I say? Tater tots. It's just like the tater tot casserole, but I'm using hash browns. I'll get it together here in a minute. Um, but I really like this. It's a easy, very few ingredients. So it's not big on the budget, and it's going to feed several people. And once I get it in my casserole dish, I'm going to put the rest of the cheese on top. 
Now you can add a few things to this if you have some leftover vegetables like corn or maybe you've even got some mushrooms or something that you want to put in there. I sprayed my pan. We're just going to dump all this in here. You know, this is one of them easy comfort casseroles is what this is. You can even add some uh, cabbage in here. Just anything like that. You know, casseroles was developed with the fact that somebody had a lot of leftovers the next day. And they made a casserole with it. And uh, it's a good thing. You're saving money. You're feeding your family. Things get hard. You just got to do stuff like that. So I just kind of spread it out. And now we're just going to put the rest of the cheese on top. And I'm just going to cover this up. Stick it in the fridge till tomorrow. I'll probably open up some vegetables out of the pantry. And maybe make a salad and maybe some hot rolls. It'll all be good. Okay, we're going to make a, a very quick cobbler here just an old-fashioned cobbler nothing fancy mine's going to be peach and i'm using some of the leftover milled berries that i had uh, milled a while back i'm going to go ahead and use the rest of it for making a crust i've never made a crust a pie crust out of milled freshly milled flour now this flour has been in the freezer so it's cold. You want all your ingredients to be cold. And this is grandma's lard pie crust. And I'm going to put, see that was one and a half cups of flour. And I'm going to put a half a cup of fresh rendered lard. And I keep my lard in the refrigerator. I have a special shelf on the bottom of my refrigerator that... Uh, I also put a pinch of salt in there. That's what I was stirring up. I'm going to put a half a cup of this fresh lard to one and a half cups of flour and a pinch of salt. You want, you want everything to be cold to get a flaky crust. So, you know, if you know you're fixing to make a pie crust, take the amount of flour that you're needing Put it in a baggie or something and stick it in your freezer. Get that stuff really cold. Make sure your lard, or if you're using shortening or butter, make sure it's really cold too, and then use very cold water. That's going to get you a flaky crust. So I'm just cutting that lard in there. That's all Grandma ever made her pie crust out of was lard. She didn't use butter. In fact, we didn't even have butter. <laughs> I can tell you. I'll tell one thing on Grandma. She used margarine. Um, she wouldn't buy butter. It was too expensive to her. And uh, So now we're going to put a little bit of ice water in here. And I'm just going to put it and stir it up. Feel of it. And I can tell it needs just a little bit more by the looks and the feel of it. And it's going to take anywhere probably from six to seven tablespoons of very cold ice water. And I'm just going to mix it up till it all comes together. But yeah, Grandma, um, of course, she was allergic to milk. So when she did, when we did have milk, she used powdered milk. I don't remember her ever buying gallons of milk. Um, she did buy what they used to call... It was called acidophilus milk, and I also had ice cream like that, and it was a non-dairy milk. I, I mean, that was back in the day. Now they have so many other different kinds of milks. So margarine was on our table. <laughs> so I, I put the pie crust in the refrigerator, and then I took it out, and I rolled it out, and I cut strips. I'm going to make this cobbler like I would at school. When we made cobblers, we rolled out big old pie crust, and then we cut strips. This is peaches from uh, last summer. They're freestone peaches, and they are very tart. 
the peaches just weren't very sweet. <clears throat> I didn't cut or roll my pie crust out long enough, but that'll be okay. It'll still eat. But I'm just going to lay my strips side by side. Now this crust is a little bit darker because like I said, I use my my hard white wheat berries ground up and that's what I'm using for this crust. <coughs> Excuse me. And I have run out of crust. But like I said, that'll be okay. It'll all be good. I didn't roll it out real thin. I like a thick crust on top of my old fashioned cobblers. So we're going to stick this in a 350 oven and uh, cook us a cobbler for tomorrow. I just wanted to bring y'all along because <laughs> coming in from the flea market, I had some things I had to do. And a couple of things was getting ready, getting some things ready for tomorrow. Okay, well, today is Sunday. And I got busy this morning and was getting all, you know, Sunday lunch together. And we come back after lunch and I warmed everything up and everything that was done was, it was great. We sat down and ate and then I just remembered, I didn't show you all the casserole after it got done. So I'm gonna, I warmed some up because there was a little bit left and I wanted to show y'all because this is, I, I really do like this casserole. And if you've ever ate uh, a tater tot casserole, you're going to like this one too. Because it's pretty much the same casserole. Just made with hash browns. I'll make sure I say that right. I just like it. I don't know. Now I'm going to show you what the cobbler turned out. The crust is, it looks like a, a wheat crust, but it's really flaky. Okay, before we dig into this cobbler, I want to show you all the crust. I mean, it's really pretty. It, turned, it cooked up good. It's good and flaky. And uh, it's, it's held up really good. So fresh uh, milled wheat berries. Uh, they say soft white wheat berries makes the best pastries. And that is true. But this was hard white wheat berries that I milled and it done just fine. Uh, it may be a little bit coarser, maybe not a, as fine, but it still turned out good. Oh, and I also got a pan of brownies right here. <laughs> well, I'm going to clean up my mess that I made <laughs> cooking all this stuff. I got so many dishes to wash. But it's always worth it. Sundays is usually just a, supposed to be a day of rest, but uh, we usually try not to do too much, you know, except for what we do for our family and our church family and, and all that stuff. But sometimes you're so far behind that you could just, whatever day you got off from work, you just use it to do what you got to do. So, everybody's gone, had a wonderful time with the grandkids. We ate and ate and ate. And now, and you know, don't matter if you do the dishes, you still got dirty dishes. You can wash them and come back and they're still sink full. <laughs> but everybody's gone now and uh, I'm going to get this mess cleaned up. And I figure we're going to have to go out and maybe do a few things, a few chores. And uh, I'll settle down a little bit, maybe get stuff ready for our lunches tomorrow because we will be going to work tomorrow. After work this week, it's, we're supposed to have three days of very, very hard storms. So... Um, I'm not sure the whole path. I know that Arkansas is in it. I'm not sure about Texas, but I'm sure that Tennessee and and uh, I've not really looked at the radar. I just know what my kids were telling me. 
So anybody that's in the path of these storms these next three days, please be safe. You know, it's that time of year. We expect these kind of storms. Some years are worse than others. Um, but we just all have to be vigilant and just be very careful and, uh, and watch for them storms. It's really worse at night when people are in bed asleep. People are so tired and they just go to bed. And a lot of times that's when them really bad tornadoes hit. But uh, hopefully it won't be that way these next three days. But they do have Arkansas, all, all counties in the red. So we'll have to be watching for that. So I won't get any gardening done after after work for about three, probably all week because it'll be too wet. But I can go in my greenhouse and I can go in my high tunnel and get some things done. And I'm going to be taking y'all out to the greenhouse and the high tunnel soon. Um, I tell you, we've had a lot of days with very high winds and going out there and trying to film anything is almost impossible. It's just too loud. The wind's too loud, and it's just just not been good. I do have some uh, cold, my cold uh, vegetables, you know, cold weather crops that are doing really good. I mean, they still got a ways to go. I got broccoli and cauliflower and cabbage, and I've got more cabbage and broccoli that's in the greenhouse that's uh, still not quite big enough to get out in the garden, but it won't be long. Because as soon as uh, the weather really starts getting really warm and um, the soil gets on up there, you know, at least in the 60 degree point, you know, things are really going to start perking up and really growing. So we still have a long time. That's one thing about Arkansas and even some more southern states than us have a longer uh, grow period than we do, but we have a pretty good amount. So we don't really have to get in that big of a hurry to get so many plants in the ground and seeds when the soil just is not warm enough. And, you know, we still have frost and heavy freezes coming, and it's just that way, you know. We could still have another snow. <laughs> it snowed one Easter here in Arkansas, and I'm sure it's done it several times then, but since my kids were little, I remember one snow on Easter, and that's when my oldest boy was was little because he hunted eggs. It wasn't a very big snow, but it was snow. So, and I've got some other things that I'm wanting to do to get done. So I'm going to bring y'all along with me when I do them. I'm not going to tell you what they are because <laughs> I'm not sure, you know, when or which ones I'll get done first. But uh, I still got some canning to do. And as summer goes on, we'll be doing more canning and uh, just things like that. I've got some different projects going on. I also need to check our eggs that we preserved in lime. I've had people ask me about them, and yes, it's, we're going to check them. Um, I got two different. Uh, one was, let's see, from, I think it was last May. So it's getting close. And then the other one, I can't remember the date on it, but we are going to be checking them to see if there's any bad ones and see if, you know, which... I've got two different uh, containers, and we'll see which ones worked, and hopefully both of both them did. So we'll check some of them. And be doing a lot more other things, that's for sure. I hope you all enjoyed this video. We loved going out Saturday. It was such a beautiful day, and I told Mr. Brown, I said, let's just run away. I said, there is so much to do on this homestead, but there is every single day of our life. We're never caught up. Never. I said, we're just going to have to run away and just throw caution to the wind, you know. <laughs> Be rebels. <laughs> yeah, we was big rebels. We just went to the flea markets. but And we went to the farm store, too. And I didn't have any footage of the farm store because I was so busy uh, gathering up stuff. I bought uh, some more seeds and... Uh, just a few plants, not very many, and I needed to get some 
triple 13 fertilizer and we needed chicken feed and uh, just I got some neem oil getting that you know stuff in case I end up with some kind of diseases this summer and uh, just different stuff like that so anyways I didn't have any footage of that I was just so busy getting in there looking at stuff and gathering stuff up but thank y'all for being with us if it weren't for y'all we wouldn't be doing this I had a comment on my last video and it's a doctor from over she's from Canada but she is over there helping people in Ukraine and she asked for prayers so we're gonna say lots and lots of prayers for Ukraine all the innocent lives being lost horrible horrible things we're gonna pray for them as always and I want to thank her for being there and helping these people I mean that's a lot it just it when I read that comment it just it just pulled at my heartstrings because she's over there doing this and helping people so God bless the doctors all the caretakers all the people whoever you are that are over there helping these innocent people God bless you and uh, prayers for all so ending that I hope y'all have a wonderful week we'll be w back within a couple of days a few days probably uh, it usually takes about three or four days sometimes and I also want to talk about uh, there's been some issues with uh, here all of a sudden with the uploading of a few of my videos and I reported it and we're not nobody's really sure what is going on why now I know some other channels that are having some issues with it too so I don't know but I know I reported it and I hope it gets better not sure but if if for some reason it's not streaming on your phone or whatever now I've had people say Lori it's just fine on the TV or computer but it's not streaming on people's phones just right as it uploads it takes a while for your phone for some reason now that I don't understand so please don't give up on it just give it <laughs> give it a few minutes I guess I don't know but like I said I reported it and that's all I can do and uh, uh, some people were saying well just take that video down try again it's not that easy you just can't do that I tell you video creators work so hard it's just a job so when something's not working out you're just so frustrated but I find myself not being frustrated over it I knew that if we give it time it would straighten up so there's just a little hiccup a little glitch somewhere in there and uh, like I said some other channels are complained about having maybe the same issues so don't give up on it it'll, it'll come through for some reason I don't I just don't understand but uh, if you haven't subscribed please subscribe because it helps us so much to keep making these videos and, and coming to y'all and uh, give it a thumbs up even though you don't see the thumbs up or thumbs down it's there because I see them and uh, it just it makes our day so anyways thank you and uh, God bless you all and uh, prayers for the world over and uh, we'll be seeing you in a couple of days so goodbye everybody <music>